right, so today I am going to be talking about painting the nose. Um, and once again, I've done a little bit of preliminary work just to save some time, uh, but I am starting off again with the same toned ground. I just um, did a, uh, a linear placement of my, my features and a very light wash of raw umber to get some sense of my light and dark. Just kind of throw this over onto the palette. I'm actually going to use my brush for mixing today just because it's not going to be a large area. Um, so I'm using a 50-50 mixture of linseed oil to turpentine and I'm going to start with my Naples yellow. So this is my Naples yellow light actually. And I'm going to add just a touch of my rose matter. So again, I'm thinking about, you know, what type of red I have. I wouldn't say it's terribly warm. Um, seeing some of those uh, sort of pinks and violets hues in there. So I would consider that to be a cool red. And then I'm also going to grab just a tiny bit of white. Okay, so once again, I'm looking at the hue um, and I'm trying to lighten that hue a little bit, change the value by adding white. It's like, it's very close to my ground. Um, so to me, it seems a little bit warm. Um, so I want to make it a little bit cooler. <clears throat> And one option I have um, is to use, I could use my blue, but I think I'm gonna try to use a little bit of my cobalt violet. And the cobalt violet is a very transparent color. Um, so what that essentially means is you kind of have to use a lot of it to influence the mixture. And a lot of times I will use cobalt violet in portraits where people have a more pale complexion. I'll usually see some of those cooler skin tones like, like the violets, the purples, the blues. Um, and that seems a little bit more accurate. So that just cooled down my hue. Um, and when looking at something like a highlight, you have <clears throat> different types of highlights. So when you're looking at something like glass, the highlights have very sharp edges. This has a soft edge. It kind of transitions into the flesh tone. I would refer to that as a diffused highlight. So it's not uh, like a little pinpoint of light, um, but it has some variation to it around the edges. So I'm going to come in and mix sort of that, that value that would fall in between the highlight and the general light. Go back to my big brush and just soften these edges a little bit. want that to not pop out too much. So I'm just going to sort of follow my original map of the shadow here. I really need that contrast to see my, my light and my dark, to understand where those values are. Um, so, you know, in the early stages, if, if you really are trying to focus on one thing I would say focus more on the value. At least get the value contrasts right and you can always adjust the hues later. Um, so that's kind of how I'm thinking right now as I'm looking at my value. And now I pretty much have all three of my general values for the nose. I have my, you know, this we could say is more of a mid-tone. 
in the front plane of the nose, I have my highlight, which is my light, and then I have my shadow, which is my dark. Now I can start adjusting all of those things and looking for more subtle variations within that. So something like my half tone, here's where I have really a nice play of warm and cool. So we have a warm shadow and you kind of move into that cool half tone. It almost becomes a little bit gray. It's very cool and very low chroma and then it gets warmer again in the light and then it gets cool in the highlight. So that's a great place to really start looking at ways of shifting my warm and my cool. Warm shadow, cool half tone, warm light, cool highlight. And that will really give the, the sense of um, turning form. So just as you're kind of varying your values to show how that form turns, you can also vary your colors. And that just gives more variation to the color. Um, and it really helps to show how those planes turn. So now I'm going to look at how I can create this color. And I see that again as being kind of cool. So I'm going to go with my ultramarine blue to start with. And I'm going to throw it into this mixture. So this is my original flesh tone. And let's just see what that does. Okay, a little bit too blue. So I come back to my palette. I think about what else I can add. Um, I'm gonna add a touch of raw sienna. So that'll make it look a little bit more green. The raw sienna mixed with the blue will Shift that slightly towards a greenish hue. And this is really the magic where you start to turn your form, but I can't do this until I've laid my color down. So right here, I kind of see this coming up and connecting to this shadow shape. And this is actually where the ball of the nose and the wing of the nose separate. There's a little bit of an indentation there. So I'm, I'm conscious of that too. I'm really looking at how I can tie these forms together. And I can see that as I come up here, I need to make this a little bit warmer in between my half tone and my shadow. If you're thinking about the wing of the nose, it kind of comes around like this. If I was to imagine a line coming around, it does something like that. And that forms sort of this outer portion of the nostril. You know, and then behind that, you have the nasal aperture. So you have that hollow space. Um, same thing happening here with the this section of cartilage kind of comes down and then tucks in right there. I want to look at that structure. Um, you know, even on this side, I'm thinking about this being sort of a tube-like form. It comes down and then you have the maxilla shooting out. You know, and what's really nice is I can kind of play off of that green and then off of the warmer hues of the red. So you have those complementary colors. So you can really get that nice contrast between those sections. <laughs> um, and a lot of times I'll push the effect if I want to. So I may not be necessarily doing it exactly as I see it, but by adding a little bit more warmth or a little bit more coolness, I can actually enhance the subject matter that way. Now I'm just kind of doing a little bit of blending getting some of those softer effects. Um, that gives me a really nice transition. So going, coming off of the green, which is more of a neutral color, and moving into more of a warm color, gives me yet another variation. 
kind of think of like your brush is almost shaping the form, like very much like sculpting, thinking about how, how those planes are changing and I'm letting my, my, my colors and my values and my transitions describe that. So it's slowly turning away from the front plane and into the bottom plane. Looking at my nostril again, now I can start adding more of my dark darks if I want to. So the first thing I'm going to do is just soften this a little bit. And right here I see it as being a little bit darker, right in this outer corner here. Actually, a deeper part of the nostril here. It's falling into deeper shadow. So rather than just having it end really abruptly there, I'm going to sort of pull that over a little bit to show this curve. And even right here, this edge would soften little bit so the contrast even of that to that hard edge gives another variation um, and then coming over to this nostril so nostrils from this angle are really kind of interesting to look at um, so first thing I want to look at is the color and I can see that this has more red in it than this um, so I'm going to I think add maybe a, even a tiny bit of my um, cad red. You know, that might be a, a nice choice. So it's part of my shadow, but it's not as dark as that. So I'm gonna actually add a little bit of this into my light flush mixture. And I'm also gonna add a little bit of my red oxide because the red on its own is just too red cad red so the red oxide will make it a little less or a little lower chroma that, just kind of throw it in okay. and maybe a little bit of this I'll take since I have it just to tone that down a little bit more really kind of sense the, the warmth in that nostril. The other thing is the transition. So looking again at edges, the top part of this, this is the ball of the nose that kind of comes up. You know, if we think about continuing this form, it's actually coming up like this and overlapping the wing of the nose. So there's a, an overlap right there, which is why you get this sort of double bump so because that's overlapping the nostril, you're getting the hard edge there, but then when I come down here, think once again about this part of the, the nostrils turning. Like you have a turn like this. So I'm gonna get more transition on that bottom portion of the nostril. Uh, so I can simply take kind of a combination of my light and that mixture I just created and put that in see right away that that turns a bit more um, and then just blending it will help to soften the edge so it's more of a sort of stepping into the light 